Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Health is Easy with X Tina. Tonight we are making a healthy, skinny chicken parm with pasta. I am going to be doing spaghetti squash for my pasta. Brian will be having regular white pasta, and I'm gonna start by cooking the spaghetti squash to get that done and out of the way. I have the oven already preheated to 400, and I just want to show you what I do with my spaghetti squash. So I am gonna cut the top off, it's so easy. And then I, I like to actually cut the bottom part too, just to make sure it's nice and flat because I don't want it kind of like rumbling around when I go to cut it. And I'm gonna cut it down the center like so. Just kind of like seesaw the knife up and down, up and down. And then I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'm going to just scoop out the seeds, season it, Pop it in the oven for like 15, 20 minutes and it's perfect. Scooping out the seeds here and a big tip that I have for you, Brian always kind of like picks on me and teases me for this, but I learned this from Rachel Ray years ago, years and years ago. I've been watching the Food Network my whole entire life. Hey, Food Network. Hi, I'm waiting for you. I'm gonna be your next Food Network star. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm manifesting it low key. But I learned from Rachel Ray to always have a garbage bowl. A garbage bowl is essential when you're cooking because you don't want to have to go to the garbage every single time you have any scraps. It just saves so much time. And then it's that much easier to just go to the garbage with a bowl of all of your scraps and stuff like that and just throw it away. So it's just, it's been a lifesaver and I've been cooking like that ever since she mentioned it. So if you ever watch any of Rachel Ray's episodes, you will see she always has that little garbage bowl that she's throwing stuff away in. So I'm gonna continue to take these seeds out and then I just wanna be very transparent and honest with you guys. I am also right now um, boiling some red lentil pasta, which that's the timer. I'm just gonna try it quick. Mm. Oh my gosh, perfect al dente. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So good. I'm gonna get that off of the heat. And I just made <clears throat> about like a half a serving, maybe a little bit more. I, to be honest, I did not even weigh it out or measure it. And the reason I'm having red lentil pasta is because I eat carbs um, and <laughs> I need, I just wanna make sure that I'm full. And I wanted, you know, this cooking show is to teach you how to make your favorite meals in like a very low calorie way. So that's of course why I'm gonna show you the spaghetti squash. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, it really healthy eating and having that balance with food really comes from making sure that you're eating the foods that you want to eat and also that keep you full. So one second. So before I finish my story, I'm just gonna spray the spaghetti squash. I'm gonna add salt, garlic powder, and pepper. I'm just gonna season the inside of it. Nice and generously, as you know, I do with everything. And you can season this with like any type of like Italian blend if you have you know, a seasoning blend or anything like that at your house. I'm also just gonna spray the bottom of the pan, flip it over so it's flesh side down. And I have the oven at 400 and I am going to start it at 15 minutes. Usually it's perfect at 20 minutes, but this is a tiny little spaghetti squash and I do not want to overcook it. I don't know if you've ever tried making spaghetti squash on your own before. If you're someone that is like, oh, I hate spaghetti squash, it might be because you actually overcooked it. When you overcook spaghetti squash, 
it's so disgusting. It is so mushy and so watery. It tastes terrible. So in order for me to make sure that I'm not gonna overcook it, this is a theme, if you can tell through all of my cooking shows, I check things before the time just to make sure it's getting close because you never know, like, it could be perfect in 15 minutes. I would rather check it at 15 and if it's a little too rare, then I'll put it in for an extra five and have that perfect 20. So I'm gonna start it at 15. So I'm gonna pop it in really quick. And just to finish what I was saying, you know, to keep this healthy lifestyle, you know, something that doesn't cause you to binge eat, overeat, have those, you know, all or nothing, episodes that yo-yo up and down I struggled with that so bad in my life and it was because I was restricting things that I really did want and I was choosing foods that were way too low calorie that did not keep me full and so I was always hungry always thinking about food and that's always what led me to binging or overeating was because I was never satisfied so with this meal with chicken parmesan I you know I am going to show you the lowest possible calorie way to eat this which is just with spaghetti squash and that's great and fine I just know that I work out I have a lot of muscle I have a fast metabolism and I need the carbs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually personally for my dinner I'm gonna mix spaghetti squash with red lentil pasta and I already cooked it I like to cook things a little bit ahead of time before I'm ready to eat it and just kind of prep it so I'm not spending like one whole hour or you know two whole hours in the kitchen I just kind of cook things slowly so I just made a very small serving I would I mean three quarters of a serving maybe I don't even think it's a full serving but the red lentil pasta has so much fiber and it really helps to keep me full but I know that if I just had this little amount I know that I wouldn't be full from that either and I would want more food so to add that volume that's why I'm going to mix in the spaghetti squash and you can also do things like mixing in steamed broccoli or um, uh, spinach or kale those are things that I always do I don't have any extra broccoli right now or I absolutely would add broccoli to my pasta but this is just a strict chicken parmesan recipe so I just want to let you know when I am eating this I will be mixing it with the red lentil pasta but you have so many variety you have so many options you could just do the spaghetti squash you could mix it with some regular white pasta or red lentil I'm choosing red lentil because the carbs are a little lower than normal pasta and there's more fiber and fiber is really what's gonna keep me full and then Brian's gonna have just plain old regular white you know Italian pasta which I'm gonna cook I'm not gonna add it into the video because it just boils and it'll be done so I will show you guys what the spaghetti squash looks like when it's done I'll see you soon okay so I just wanted to show you guys up close and personal what the spaghetti squash looks like at 20 minutes at 400 degrees so it's perfect you want it to be kind of like <sighs> not hard to pull away because you can see it's not hard to pull away but it's it's still warm remember when things are still warm they're going to continue to cook still so this is perfect because it's still going to soften up so i am just going to let this sit and chill and then when i see you next we are going to get started on the chicken all right so now it is time to prep our chicken for our chicken parmesan so the most important part to this process is to season every layer. Learned that from Giada, once again, Food Network. You have to season every layer whenever you are cooking, whenever you add anything to the pan, whenever you're cooking with anything, you have to season that thing and it will bring the dish together. So we have two chicken cutlets. I went to Fresh Market and I asked them for thinly sliced chicken cutlets. And then instead of an egg for my egg batter to make my breadcrumb stick, I'm just gonna use egg whites because why add the extra fat with a whole egg when you can get the same binding consistency with just the egg whites. So that's a calorie hack right there is to use egg whites instead of one whole egg. And then I just have regular old panko breadcrumbs. You don't need the whole wheat. You don't, it's really not that big of a difference. You're not gonna have 
that much of a serving of breadcrumbs on your chicken, so don't worry about it. Have the real stuff. But I wanted to point out because I do have some clients that are celiac or glute, or they follow like a gluten-free lifestyle. So an alternative to this would be, this is from Trader Joe's. Maybe if you don't have a Trader Joe's by you, maybe search this on Amazon, but it's rice crumbs. And I have used this in the past to, for breading chicken and fish and things like that. And it's worked beautifully, but I don't have to watch out for gluten i don't have an allergy so i'm gonna have the real thing but i wanted to point that out rice crumbs they are gluten free it's just kind of like white rice that they um pulsed up in like a blender i'm assuming i don't really know but let's get started so i haven't seasoned anything yet so i'm going to start with salt of course you know me this is episode four so you better know to salt the heck out of your food i'm going to do each side of my chicken. Actually, I'm just gonna do one, I'm gonna do the first side of the chicken and then flip it and then cause I'm gonna season each side um, with all the same stuff. So I salted the chicken, I'm gonna salt the egg whites and I'm gonna salt the breadcrumbs. I'm gonna salt the breadcrumbs good because the breadcrumbs is what we're gonna initially taste. That's gonna be that first taste when you bite the chicken because that's the coating of the chicken. And then let's do some garlic powder again on the chicken. And I'm gonna skip the garlic powder for the egg whites uh, because it's just, that's just really to bind the breadcrumbs to the chicken. So I don't really need the egg whites to be garlicky. I'm just going to make sure that I do a good serving on the breadcrumbs and just mix that up with my hands here. And then just a little bit of pepper and I'm gonna skip the pepper on the egg wash as uh, the, egg, the egg whites too just because it doesn't really matter I'm seasoning the most important part but I did salt the egg whites and now I flip the chicken and I'm just gonna repeat with the salt nice big serving the salt is what seasoned your chicken garlic powder and some pepper. So I'm just going to, I have my cutting board here so I can place my breaded chicken right on the cutting board. And I am gonna, super easy, just dip the chicken cutlet into the egg whites, just drain off any excess, and then dip it in the breadcrumbs. And that is it. Just because chicken is breaded does not mean it is unhealthy, especially if you make it from home. You can really, I mean, you get to control the amount of oil that you are searing it in. So I think the best time to have something like this, like, like you know, something seared, um, something seared, something breaded, is to do it at home because you can really control what goes in it, you know? We're controlling the fat, with the egg whites versus one whole egg. And then we can also control how much oil. We're not gonna deep fry it like most restaurants do. They just stick it in the deep fryer. I am just gonna sear it on each side in avocado oil, which is such a healthier fat. If you are, like I tell my clients, if they are struggling to like hit enough fat in their day, I always tell them, add some oil to your meals, add some coconut oil, add some avocado oil when you're cooking. These are healthy oils, so don't be scared of them. So I love that when we cook this recipe, I'm just gonna be using avocado oil, which is such a healthy oil. So I'm gonna wash my hands, and I'm gonna let the chicken sit here for a second, and I'm gonna bring you over while I heat up some avocado oil in the pan. All right, so I just have a small pan here because it's just Brian and I, we're just having two small chicken cutlets. And I'm gonna turn the heat on medium high, about a seven setting, and I am using avocado oil. But first, I am just going to spray the bottom of the pan just because I do not want the breadcrumbs to stick at all to this pan because that would ruin that beautiful crust that we have on our chicken. This is just an extra little step 
doesn't really make that big of a difference, I don't think, but I just do it every time. And then with this avocado oil, I just like to coat the bottom of the pan. I would say maybe start with two tablespoons. I would rather you have more than not enough because just because you're putting oil in the pan doesn't mean all of that oil will be on your one chicken breast. We are going to drain any excess oil with a paper towel, but we want the chicken to just be beautifully gold, golden brown. And if there's not enough oil in the pan, it's going to get that burnt, not crispy. It's just going to be, I don't know, that like just, I don't want to say that healthy version of chicken parm, but like I want to give you a recipe that's actually legit chicken parm. And I don't want you to be afraid to use oil because you're not going to be ha eating two tablespoons of oil. You're, we're just using this as a base to just have a beautiful golden brown color on the breadcrumbs. And like I said, if you're having a healthy oil, like avocado oil, don't fear it. We're gonna drain the excess on a paper towel. It's all gonna be okay. It's gonna be worth it because you're going to get the satisfaction of biting into that really crispy, crunchy chicken cutlet that is the essence of chicken parmesan. And you're gonna really fix that craving that you've had for an Italian chicken parm dinner. And if you don't do it right, it's not gonna be something that you felt like you enjoyed. And that's, like I said before, when the binging happens. So I am just going to let this heat up. I want it to be nice and hot. And the reason I'm using avocado oil is because it has a higher smoke point. So you can cook the oil at higher temperatures. Avocado oil and coconut oil have that higher smoke point, but I'm not gonna use coconut oil because I don't want the chicken to have that coconut flavor. And with coconut oil, sometimes it does have that coconut flavor. So avocado oil is just a great alternative for like a neutral tasting oil that is perfect for that sear. So I'm gonna let this heat up. I'm just gonna, I don't know, let it heat up for two, maybe three minutes, but I'm just gonna stay here and feel it. And when it's nice and hot, then I'm gonna add my chicken. And I just wanna talk you through it really quick before I start cooking, because as I add the chicken, it might get loud with um, that, like, you know, the sound once the breadcrumbs hit the oil, it'll get a little bit loud. So I don't want you to not be able to hear me. So the biggest thing with chicken, cutlets, you know, browning chicken, Brian always has this, is that in order to cook the chicken inside, he tends to burn the breadcrumbs and that's not what we want. So we are heating up the pan on a medium high heat setting about a seven and we can always lower the heat. So as you know, we are cooking the chicken, the heat is gonna be on. So the pan is gonna get hotter and hotter. The oil is going to get hotter and hotter. So just turn the heat down a little bit. You know, I will kind of walk you through it as I'm cooking it. I just wanted to say that before I started in case it got hard for me to hear. I most likely, once I flip the chicken, will turn the heat down to about a medium just to make sure that it's not like dark black. I want it to be beautifully golden brown. So I'm gonna let this heat up. It's getting nice and hot, so I need one more minute, and then I'm gonna add the chicken cutlets. All right, the pan is smoking a little bit, so we're gonna add this chicken. Like I said, it's gonna get a little bit loud, which is a good thing, though. Oh, good, not too loud. I always get scared, because I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. All right, so I am just going to be moving the pan a little bit, just to make sure the oil is getting everywhere. And these are chicken cutlets, so they're pretty thin. So I'm gonna put a timer on for three minutes and I am just gonna let the heat and the oil do its thing. I have a paper towel here and I usually make my own tomato sauce, but because this is health is easy, 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 easy. I just bought tomato sauce at the grocery store at Fresh Market, tomato basil pasta sauce. I always check the nutrition facts because some tomato sauces can be so high in carbs. And this one is for a half a cup, which I will not even be using for a serving. A half a cup, just moving the oil around, is 1.5 grams of fat and eight carbs. 50 calories. So I am not even gonna be using that. I would maybe even half of that. So it's really great. This is really great macro friendly tomato sauce. Once again, always look at your serving size. So in a, a pot over here, I don't think you can see it. I'm just gonna be warming up. I'm probably gonna put in about, I don't know, maybe like a cup of tomato sauce just to make sure that Brian and I have enough 
um, tomato sauce to like mix our pasta in and everything. And because I pre-cooked the my red lentil pasta, Brian's pasta, and then the spaghetti squash has been sitting out, our pasta is cooled. So by warming up this sauce, I'm gonna toss the cooled pasta in the sauce and that's gonna warm everything up. So I'm gonna warm this up as this finishes cooking on this first side. And just keep an eye when you're cooking, just be around, you know? Like I can see there's, you know, it's starting to brown. Ooh, I'm getting splattered. So I turn the heat down from a seven to a six, just because I want a beautiful golden brown. I don't want dark, 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 like black. So I turn down the heat a little bit just because I can see it browning a little bit. So just stay around, take a peek. I like to also kind of like lift it up a little bit. Check it out. It's looking so gorgeous. Oh my God, it's perfect. Literally perfect. And I know it's nice and golden brown. So I'm gonna turn it down to medium because it really is perfectly golden. And the pan is continuing to heat up because we're cooking. So when the heat is on it, the oil is gonna get hotter and hotter. The timer is about to go off for our three minutes. So what I do is I spray the raw side. That oil is almost done. Spray that raw side nice and good and then we are going to flip it. Oh my gosh. How perfect is that? I hope you can see it. I don't know if you can. And I'm gonna cook it for another three minutes and I'm just gonna add a touch more oil because I want the other side to be just as beautifully golden. And the oil has absorbed a little bit. And I just wanna make sure that we have enough so I'm just moving the oil around. And don't forget, I turned the heat down to medium. I'm gonna put the top on almost to mimic like an oven. And then I'm gonna cook this for another three minutes until it is perfect. All right, so the timer just went off Ooh, for the chicken. I just like to touch it to make sure that I feel that it's not like, like raw. I know what it, feels like when it's raw. Um, it's hard to explain. <laughs> but when the chicken is raw, it's like, it's just so like bouncy and this was nice and firm. So like I told you before, I'm just going to drain any excess oil on this paper towel. And for now, I am just gonna set this aside. I have my sauce right here and I'm going to set the oven to a high broil. So I have my chicken cutlets on my baking sheet. I have some tomato sauce and I am just going to lightly spoon over just a little tomato sauce over the chicken. I have some Parmesan cheese that I am just going to grate over the top. Brian loves Parmesan cheese. So because he loves it so much, that is why his looks like a little snow. And I'm going to just broil it to just melt it a little bit. I'm gonna keep it in the broiler just for a couple minutes, but as that broils, I'm gonna to toss Brian's pasta and my pasta in the sauce and get our plates ready. All right, so I have my two plates here. I am just going to dump Brian's pasta in the sauce because remember it was just a little cold, a little, I guess the pasta was at room temperature technically. And I just want to coat the pasta and I get a nice big spoon and just spoon it right onto this plate. I'm going to do the same with my pasta. cheese on his. 
I didn't put too much melted cheese on mine, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more and it's gonna just naturally melt just because the chicken is nice and warm. And then I'm just gonna add some more cheese to Brian's pasta. Ooh, ooh. And then I will be bringing this whole thing over for him because he loves his parm cheese. But let me bring you over to my dinner table and I will show you what it looks like. So here is mine with the mixture of my spaghetti squash and my red lentil pasta with my light Parmesan cheese. Yummy, such a good size portion too. And then here is Brian's nice, big, normal, regular pasta and his beautifully cheesy chicken breast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. This is such a quick and easy dinner. It's such a favorite too. Who doesn't love chicken parm? So before this gets cold, because this is really my dinner tonight, I'm gonna sit down and get eating. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please like and subscribe. Comment below any recipes that you are dying to watch and have me cook for you. Health really is easy when you do it with me. See you later. Bye.